Uh, my name is Greg or Grzegorz Tworek. I'm working uh, in Standard Chartered as malware secur security lead engineer and deeply in my heart, I'm on the blue side and I'm digging into internals of Windows and this is what I do both for work and, and uh, for fun. And today the agenda is quite simple uh, because I would like to talk about monitoring in Windows, briefly go through possible options and then talk about ETW and then the rest of the time will be uh, some demonstration of, of practical aspects of the ETW. So when it comes to monitoring, uh, we have a lot of possibilities of a lot of uh, ways how Windows is trying to tell us uh, what it is doing. So first, the best known are event logs. In the past, we had three event logs. Right now, we have hundreds of them. It is relatively easy to ask about all of them uh, using PowerShell, using uh, the um, get win, ev win event uh, uh, command with list log parameter. And you will see this like 400 is not unusual uh, number. Then we have performance counters. Uh, this is something we can observe in performance. And here number is coming into thousands. And um, I'm talking only about those provided by the operating system itself. Uh, some other applications are doing uh, their own monitoring uh, um, thing through those interfaces. If you are developing some applications, it would be great if you do the same way as uh, it is It is great, well known and uh, well known also for administrators. So they are relatively well fitted to monitor uh, the stuff you are trying to share with them. Uh, next, we are going to some less known uh, things within Windows. The first thing is the uh, debug channel, the debug output, because uh, uh, an application can print something into a debug channel. It is not appearing anyway, anywhere uh, on the screen. Um, and if uh, you want, you can monitor this. If you run your application within debugger, uh, the debug output will appear in the debugger console. Uh, if you want to stay more on some uh, on the, the administrator side, not the developer side, you can launch debug view from sys internals and also observe what applications are talking about, what is happening inside. Uh, interesting fact is uh, some uh, release application not being intended to monitor what is happening inside are pretty talkative using uh, debug output and debug view can uh, display you what is happening inside, including number of uh, the line in the code, etc. So um, it is good exercise to make it running both for your application and for um, uh, third party application. If you are developers, writing to debug view is not very complicated. It is well documented. It is done through API. It is slightly more complex through from PowerShell, but it's way better than uh, spitting message boxes or uh, logging into a text file for your own purpose, how the code is going. Doing this through debug channel is way more convenient. Next, we have uh, a slightly more hidden features. The first one is WPP, Windows Software Trace Preprocessor. It is intended for developers. The idea of WPP is to provide developers a way of uh, testing what is happening within the application. It's less, slightly uh, more structured than the debug view, uh, debug output. So it may be used uh, for tests, for um, pre-releases, and so on. Uh, on the top of WPP, there is one interesting feature, uh, so-called in-flight trace recorder. It is somehow documented by Microsoft. And um, with IFR, uh, you can relatively easily uh, find the log. Uh, the size of the log uh, for IFR is relatively small. Uh, but at the same time, it is kept in the memory in a cir circular uh, form. And when the dump is uh, created, uh, the data from the IFR is going into well-determined place. So uh, it is a great feature, especially if you are uh, doing some kernel uh, development, because if your OS crashes, you open the um, dump and you can relatively easily uh, read what uh, went to um, 
IFR, so seeing the last actions about uh, your software, uh, what it did before the OS crashed. Uh, we have also some kernel black boxes for monitoring. Those are not exposed. Uh, uh, actually, um, only two of those are documented, and one is for the boot process, and another one is uh, for services. And those can be read through um, extensions uh, for the debugger. The boot process is uh, not very deeply covered in the modern version of operating systems. Uh, services are talking about what is happening, and you can read the data or report the data through this mechanism as well. And the final one, last but not least, is uh, event tracing for Windows or uh, ETW. And when it comes to ETW, the architecture is uh, well documented by Microsoft. It appeared uh, for the first time in Windows Vista. Uh, at the beginning, it uh, has uh, lower number of sessions. So if someone uh, listened to, to uh, uh, ETW uh, stuff, others cannot listen to it. Right now, it is uh, relatively uh, easy because we have uh, higher numbers uh, of, of session uh, available. And within the structure, we have the, the engine uh, itself, uh, the uh, block in the middle of the diagram. Uh, we have some uh, controllers on the top. Uh, controllers are uh, applications man mainly telling to the ETW engine what to do, which providers uh, to use, uh, uh, where to store the data tr going through ETW, and so on. Uh, we have uh, providers, I will cover them uh, in a moment, and we have consumers, someone uh, who is pushing uh, a set of uh, messages into um, the ETW engine and someone obtaining uh, messages out of the, of the engine. And of course, it is also possible to store the data coming out of the ETW uh, into a file on a drive with some parameters uh, specifying what is the maximum size, if it's a uh, um, circular log, etc., etc. And we can also specify which events uh, we want to collect, both in terms of which provider we want to uh, um, listen to and uh, which type of events from this particular providers are um, interesting uh, for um, us. Okay, uh, the next slide is actually uh, the almost the last one, because right now I will go more through this nice bluish uh, console. So uh, to start, let's see uh, what, uh, what, which providers uh, and which sessions within the uh, ETW infrastructure are present uh, right now. The main command, which is built into the operating system, is logman command. Uh, its syntax is not very obvious, but uh, there is some built-in help, there is some documentation. Uh, what I like to do is uh, to perform logman query uh, minus ETS. Minus ETS generally saying means uh, do it right now for, li for live uh, monitoring. So um, ETS, uh, this is the set of uh, sessions being uh, currently active within the operating systems. Uh, you can see from here that even some uh, data going into the event log is actually a, writing a file uh, based on the some um, on some ETW uh, data. I can uh, check the security. Um, for example, it, as this one would be smaller. Um, I can do logman query and then name of the uh, log and then ETS and I can uh, name of the session and I can observe uh, how events in the event log security are appearing uh, that are coming from uh, the um, real time trace uh, and uh, there is some uh, data where the data is collected and then is transferred to the to the uh, event log if i do the same for um, application uh, event log 
I will probably see a lot of uh, providers, which means um, I will launch a new console um, because it may take some time. Um, even log application EPS, and uh, this probably will return some result in a moment showing us how stuff is going to application uh, event log. Uh, if we want to display just providers, uh, there is a command uh, logman query providers um, displaying us who is willing to talk to the EPW engine. Um, I will uh, launch um, also uh, regedit. Um, and within regedit, I can show you where this those pro, uh, providers are uh, registered. I have those under publishers. And here you can see the list of uh, GUIDs. Uh, with all those uh, provider being uh, registered. If I return to the result of my command, logman query providers, you can see the set of uh, my uh, providers. You can see the list is quite long. It's usually uh, more than 1,000 different providers. For different functionalities within the operating system, reporting their data into the... Uh, into the... Uh, to the uh, ETW engine. Uh, so, uh, Grzegorz, we have a uh, ask from the attendees. They the don't see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you could make the uh, I hope this one is, uh, is enough. Um, uh, if not, please let me know. I prefer do not zoom do not zoom in and out. And the command uh, here was uh, this one: logman query providers. Um, so uh, it works for some time and then uh, uh, reports uh, the, uh, the data from prov providers. Providers are registered here. You can s see some of those. Um, for such provider, there is a manifest being published. So if I took if I take this one, let's say, I have no idea what this, this, this is about, uh, I will copy it to the desktop as uh, copying it um, is needed because uh, I will use resource hacker, which is not working properly with hard links and the files within the Windows System 32 folder are actually hard links. So co copy this file to desktop. Um, resource hacker, uh, which I have on the desktop, uh, and then I control O, and I will open the, uh, the DLL I have copied, open, and within the DLL, I cannot see the thing, I, I, I see the first one, is a WEVT template, and this one is actually about the manifest about events uh, being reported to EW. You can see this one is pretty short, uh, but we have a longer one as well. Well, you develop your software, actually are compiling uh, your uh, XML description into this format. This format is not really documented. So um, seeing it from this perspective may be uh, challenging, but you can have some data or idea uh, which way um, to go. Okay, uh, I can uh, ask uh, for some specific uh, provider. I had the, the list uh, on the screen a moment ago. I will uh, refer to the um, provider uh, responsible for PowerShell, for example. So uh, there is a special provider for the PowerShell only. Uh, Logman, uh, Query uh, providers, uh, and the name of the uh, PowerShell provider is Microsoft uh, uh, Windows um, PowerShell, and I will see some data about this particular provider. So the name of the provider, the uh, UID of the provider. Uh, some data being useful for uh, filtering um, the um, 
events coming to our consumer. So I can specify flags, uh, which type of the message from the this provider I'm interested in. Uh, so I can see only run space or using just a mask. And another mask I can use is the mask for the level of the, um, the message because uh, it may be interesting to listen only to errors or whatever this is the, the reason for this so if you are registering for a provider for um, registering for listening to some providers you are also specifying this data and um, it there is no general rule it is up to the developer of the uh, provider what it means sometimes it is well described sometimes not really uh, and if you are creating your own providers, uh, it would be great to uh, provide this de description in um, uh, a reasonable way. Uh, if I start uh, PowerShell and if I issue the same command again, uh, I will also see an, a list of images using this uh, provider actively right now. Um, a list of uh, processes and responsible images. Uh, I can also specify a PID as a parameter for uh, Logman uh, query providers with the minus PID parameter. Uh, but sometimes it is not working properly. I have no idea why. It is working sometimes and sometimes not, and it may take a lot of time uh, to uh, process it. Okay, let's use those providers as we have uh, some theory behind uh, behind it. Uh, it would be great to uh, play with those. Uh, the first thing uh, I would like to cover, maybe not uh, directly playing, but uh, by explaining things, uh, we can, of course, manipulate those registrations. Are as those registration, if we remove something, it will, uh, will be unregistered and uh, we will have uh, some issues. Uh, this provider will not talk to us uh, anymore. So we can blind our monitoring tools uh, using this uh, way. Another, another thing, if uh, I go to autologers, uh, which is in the registry over here, here we have the set of uh, those automatic loggers I, uh, I, uh, I demonstrated at the very beginning. So uh, the currently running, run automatically by the operating system to register, to monitor uh, stuff uh, happening uh, within the operating system uh, during its normal usage. Uh, and here is pretty nice uh, thing uh, because maybe not this one, I we try to uh, find some, maybe uh, Defender will be good enough because if I go to particular uh, GUID responsible for some provider, there is a value uh, registry uh, value called enable set to one. We can play with those, uh, switching those to non one, which means uh, uh, those uh, auto providers will. Uh, uh, will um, not monitor this. Uh, I can see the question uh, on the chat. Uh, does registry removal to get rid of logging require system restart? Yes. Uh, for this type of the registering providers by removing registry entries, uh, it requires reloading the entire engine, which which requires system uh, restart. For this particular uh, method, it, it's yes. Uh, most of manipulations uh, related to, to the ETW will require restart if you want to manipulate them uh, kind of illegal way. Um, yet another thing I can um, mention here um, is under security. Uh, so it is here. It is local machine system current control set control WMI security. And here you can see a list of all providers, actually the, the GUIDs, and then the data. And the data for every single provider is a security descriptor. Uh, if you like to play with binary security descriptors, you can uh, do this uh, right here. But I have also uh, prepared a small uh, script um, reading those registry values um, and then trying to decrypt those uh, permissions into uh, a bit more human readable uh, uh, 
things. Uh, the important thing I'm specifying within comments uh, for my scripts is if there is no uh, access control list for some particular uh, provider, it means there is a special GUID being a template. So there, if there is no explicitly specified security for some provider, it will be inherited from this uh, GUID. If I run the script, uh, I'm not an admin, which happens. Uh, I will run ISA as admin. Um, digging through this registry part is not for everyone. So I will uh, run it right here. Uh, after some time, it will spit the output uh, into two grid views. One will provide um, SDDLs for permissions, and another one will try to pr uh, provide ACLs into, into a bit more uh, human readable form. Um, here you can see those. Here you can see one GUID with a couple of entries uh, specifying uh, what is allowed for the system, local service administrators and user, and so on. For every single provider being uh, listed there, we have this uh, um, set over here. Those are not uh, decrypted by my script for some reason. I, I have no idea why I didn't uh, spot this previously, but it happens. Probably requires some. Uh, reading what those uh, flags actually uh, mean. And here you can see the same stuff within SDDL form, uh, which is way more readable for someone used to it, uh, specifying one provider and then one set of permissions, CC for authenticated users, uh, this uh, mask for local system, uh, local service, uh, network service, built-in admins, and so on and so on is about um, SDDL uh, syntax. So we can play with permissions for ETW providers who can read those, uh, who can uh, write into those, uh, through those providers, uh, etc. As uh, sometimes pretty sensitive uh, stuff is uh, transferred over there. So. Usually, it is uh, for um, only for admins to be to be read under um, normal conditions within the normally installed um, operating system. Interesting thing is um, there is um, there's something to play with because it is mostly about COM-based application. There is a, a um, system uh, environment uh, variable. I'm thinking how to show it to you. Um, it it would be good to, uh, you can play with this on your own uh, with the um, process explorer, for example. Because if you start PowerShell, you will see some .NET details within the uh, on the tabs of the process explorer details of the of the process. Uh, if you uh, set a special not so long time discovered by Adam Chester, um, environment variable uh, com plus uh, and underscore etw enable oh, come on. Uh, equals zero. Uh, right now, I set this variable within the uh, CMD. And if I run, run PowerShell uh, from here, it will inherit, uh, I'm within the PowerShell, uh, but it inherits the environment from the uh, parent process, which means, um, uh, which means um, ETW uh, is somehow blind within this um, process. Uh, maybe not this one. I will um, try to launch. Uh, Live as is internals com to demonstrate it to you. Oh, come on. This is what I'm doing when I'm at, um, I think. Um, and uh, process explorer is the thing I would like to launch. So, process uh, run. Um, I can switch it to um, 
of course I have to agree I never did before on this machine I will switch it to um, admin token and if I try to uh, find the PowerShell right now I can use this one for example and um, PowerShell is the child process uh, I'm curious which one I will um, close this one to make it simpler and this PowerShell finally I'm here you can see um, here you can see no information if uh, I'm right it is uh, blind uh, this way uh, if I do the same um, without this variable uh, I will obtain more information so uh, you can see absolutely nothing within uh, .NET assemblies for the PowerShell exit um, I will set this to nothing uh, run PowerShell again go again here uh, go to PowerShell and within .NET assemblies I can see because those are reported to um, to uh, process explorer with etw if you are just listening to etw you will see the similar effect it will be nothing coming out of uh, here um the question i can see uh, is uh, can i um, modify logging providers customers with uh, some api yes there is a published mp API for this you can register for events you cannot uh, modify what some um, provider is reporting as is just throwing the data into the, the engine um, but you can register your own stuff uh, asking for the particular stuff and so on and I hope it uh, answers uh, your question at least uh, partially some of the stuff uh, within the API is not uh, really um, documented I will show you one of those uh, in a second uh, which data is coming out of of those uh, providers um, there is a lot of information coming from different components of the uh, Windows operating system uh, some of those related to hard disk drive some others there is a provider responsible for reporting to etw every single etern ethernet frame going through the network interface so etw has a built-in sniffer maybe not etw itself but there is a provider acting constantly as a sniffer and the only thing to do is to listen to it uh, and you will have uh, the, the sniffer uh, up and running within the operating system using only built-in stuff right now we have yet another sniffer built into the operating system but in the past it was an option uh, we have win inet which is quite often uh, demonstrated win inet provider is the one uh, responsible for throwing the data uh, to the ssl tunnel so if your web page is trying to send something through https uh, in theory encrypted way you can sniff to it through etw before it goes uh, into the tunnel which means you will obtain a clear text uh, sniffing for the uh, https transmission yet another example before i start my own uh, is uh, sniffing to usb um, because um, we have some sniffers related to usb uh, buses uh, which means we can uh, listen to all messages going through usb and nowadays most of keyboards keyboards is connected through uh, usb which means we have the data entered on the keyboard i can see the question uh, on the uh, chat uh, do we need admin rights to sniff using etw generally saying yes but we can manipulate somehow permissions for the etw providers as i demonstrated with registry with uh, security descriptors and uh, the, the script this uh, somehow uh, decoding it but generally saying it is a stuff for admin mainly due to the sensitivity of the uh, data going there um, my uh, demonstration about um, about etw some something i uh, played with i i uh, found uh, is related to um, one of those providers we have it is uh, logman uh, query 
providers, um, and the one is Microsoft uh, Windows OS K. And we have such provider. You can see it is relatively um, small when it comes to um, granularity of the data. You can try to guess what is OSK. Uh, I will start, and this is how we do, um, how we register for uh, storing the stuff from the ETW using uh, command line. So uh, I will leave the name and the syntax is first is coming the name, Logman, I will name the session. Uh, OSK. I will use minus p provider Microsoft Windows OSK. I will use minus o for output. I will use a root OSK ETL. ETL is tra traditionally used for um, storing the data coming from traces, uh, especially for ETW. And I will issue important part of it, which is ETS, which means please do it uh, right uh, now. And uh, with, the, with what I did, logman start. Uh, so now it started, now it uh, works. I finally la launch OSK. If you have no idea what is OSK, you can see it right now. It is on screen keyboard. And I will press some keys like uh, X3, 3, F, con and enter. Of course, it went here. It is not recognized. I can close the um, uh, on-screen keyboard. Uh, it would be great to stop the, um, the session uh, registering um, events into the uh, ETL file. So logman, logman stop uh, OSK uh, minus ETS and uh, you can see OSK ETL have some data collected. This file is a binary file. So the thing to be done is uh, definitely to convert it to something more human readable if, uh, the, if this is what we want to uh, do right now. There is another built-in Windows command, trace RPT. Trace RPT, and you have to provide um, OSK ETL the input file and minus O the output file. OSK uh, XML, and uh, usually we have some errors. Uh, we can have some errors. It is quite rare. I cannot see any errors here, but you do not, that some events were not 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 recognized. Okay, if I do Notepad um, OSK XML, you can see messages from. Um, ETW from this particular provider being nicely uh, described in the uh, XML. What I uh, can do, I know there are fields within those properties, within those, uh, uh, these XML files, within those messages uh, called TCID. So I do find uh, STR um, TCID within the OSK XML and I can see uh, the stuff uh, over here. Um, if I try to um, convert those to uh, hex values, as those are uh, decimal values, it would be to D, uh, 0, 4, 0, 4, uh, 3, 3 means uh, to 1, and then uh, to E. 1, 8, and 3, 1, and then uh, the enter uh, key I have pressed uh, as the last one. And uh, what are uh, those? Uh, it is about how keyboards uh, are working within the PC uh, machine, because keyboard is not uh, sending ASCII characters to uh, to the uh, hardware, but keyboard is sending so-called so uh, scan codes. Um, so you can find a list of scan codes wherever uh, over the internet, control F, uh, 2D, 
was x, then 0, 4 was 3 twice, then 2, 1, f, and what a surprise to e for c, and 1, 8 for o, and 3, 1, all hex for n. I do not like seeing scan codes in the decimal form, but you have those. So you can try to uh, sniff the on-screen keyboard, which is sometimes used as a kind of a security improvement. Please use your um, on-screen keyboard to do not allow others to sniff it, whatever. Well, it depends where you try to uh, sniff. Okay, I will uh, go uh, to the command prompt CLS, uh, I will make it bigger. Uh, brief, uh, I'm a regular user with a limited token, not, uh, not elevated. Uh, and um, Windows is not activated, not a surprise as I have installed it today. Um, and um, I will try to start one of the uh, services. Uh, net start uh, as DC. There is a service for reporting errors, Windows reporting services. As, as a regular user, I obtain um, error 5, which is access denied. If I go as an admin, um, I can try to verify why I have access denied, which is not a big surprise, but I can do this with SC, SD, show, uh, WAR, SVC. Here you can see SDDL again for a reason. You can see um, in you can see regular users here is for um, everyone. This is for local system uh, built in admins. The key here is uh, RPWP uh, on the uh, SDDL, me meaning who can uh, start and stop the service. And regular users usually cannot uh, start uh, the service. So if I dig deeper into this service, I can uh, display something called triggers. SCQ trigger info WER SVC, and you can see this particular service will start when receiving an ETW message with this provider because services can start on, on message, being can, services can be triggered with a message. And the interesting thing is, I'm not allowed to start a service as a user. This particular one, by I'm uh, perfectly allowed to uh, send this message. Uh, SC uh, query um, WRSVC, uh, the service is stopped, and uh, using my um, tiny uh, application, I can send the W message and hopefully I will see it is running right now. I have no permission to send a start command, but I have permission to send an ETW message. And this particular service is configured in a way uh, making it, making actually service man manager react on this uh, message. Uh, I'm sharing the code for this. Uh, it is relatively um, simple with the only thing here. Um, I'm uh, using ETW event write no registration uh, from the exported by NTDLL. Uh, and the thing here is this function is not documented because, because of Microsoft. Uh, but you can use it uh, and it works. I'm sharing the uh, code, so uh, it is not uh, very high, hard to uh, follow me somehow. Okay, let's go further. Here you can see the list of uh, the stuff uh, being uh, helpful. So you have two uh, Windows commands, logman and tracerpt. You have a chance to uh, see those during our session. Uh, Microsoft is also providing message analyzer. Well, I'm used to say the message analyzer for a reason starts, starts with a mess. I do not like this application. It's definitely too heavy to uh, sniff ETW, but it can do this. There is a trace view within SDK, WDK, uh, so downloadable from Microsoft. Uh, it is not always working. Fingers crossed for you. Um, and some third-party stuff. Uh, Silk ETW by FireEye. 
it is a dotnet wrapper for uh, etw so if you are more dotnet people you can try to uh, run this way there is etw explorer made by uh, pavel yosifovich the co-author of the latest edition of the windows internals book uh, so etw explorer allows you to browse through etw providers using graphical interface if you really do not like uh, command line for some reason uh, power crafts etw uh, open source on github uh, by zach brown is a wrapper for etw to powershell to allow you directly manipulate uh, with etw using powershell which may be somehow uh, beneficial windshark is made by airbus cert and it is about this airbus it's about uh, their uh, response team uh, within airbus and windshark is a plugin to wireshark where you can conf can configure uh, etw providers and those will appear within the wireshark uh, as uh, some data coming to wireshark it may be the the interface the querying the whatever uh, or uh, the format of files etc may be more friendly for some of users uh, using wireshark on uh, a regular basis and there is also github repository uh, i'm trying to maintain it is not only about etw but some etw may happen there if you try to search for etw you will find uh, the, the stuff uh, for sure and that's basically it um, I tried to make you a crash course against ETW. Um, my idea was to uh, make you willing to play with it because the rest is on your own. Probably the uh, audience is too, uh, very different. Probably you have some developers, a red team, blue team, and so on. So there is no one session useful for everyone. And it's the same about the level of... Uh, your knowledge of the ETW and the operating system. Some of you are just admins, some of those, some of you are uh, kernel developers and for sure the different part of the entire uh, scope will be interesting for you. But uh, I tried to provide you kind of the door into the ETW world and now it is uh, on you and on your responsibility. Thank you very much and hopefully see you soon.